All right, folks. So I got a question from a buddy that asked me how to measure the attenuation of this common mode choke. Not this one in particular, but one that he had made. And uh, this is a T240 Mix 31. And uh, that is a really good toroid for making chokes. It's very broad banded, wide banded. And we'll take a look at that uh, when we do some testing on this. And the goal is to see if it is appropriate to use as a choke and it, if it attenuates at the right level. So what we have here is just 12 windings of, this is a PTFE coated or Teflon coated copper, it's tinned copper wire stranded. And um, it has a temperature resistance of up to 600 degrees, which is in excess of what we're gonna need for something like this. But anyhow, it's just 12 wraps. Um, this will work for any, this method that we're gonna use will work for any choke. Um, but this is one that I like in particular, and it has 12 wraps on either side, and the wraps are mirrored. So here you can see that uh, on the left-hand side, the red is on the right, and on the right-hand side, the red is on the left. And then you just connect the two wires together, and uh, this choke works really well. So in this video, we're going to show how to test it. Basically, what we want to do is we want to isolate anything on the center uh, conductor of our coaxial cable, uh, and run that through one side of the toroid. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect it to the red uh, here and here. And then we're going to leave the black disconnected and we're gonna short that out. At PCBWay.com, they're having a sale of up to 60% off both flex and rigid flex PCB solutions. At PCBWay.com, you can get a detailed explanation on the differences between flex and rigid flex PCB. You can also get explanations of when to use each to enhance your project. PCB Way has fast and affordable shipping to over 170 countries. If you have questions, check out PCB Way's help portal. So in order to do this, we have these BNC cables with these alligator clips. Now, I'm not going to show how I calibrated all of this. I have a ton of videos on nano VNAs and how to calibrate them, and you can check that out. But um, when I did calibrate the nano VNA, I did do a through test, through calibration, through these cables, just by connecting the reds to the reds and the blacks to the blacks. And that, that's how you can do that. And we'll take a look at how I set everything up and configure it. And then for today's video, what we're going to use is the Sysjoin SV4401A. Um, this nano VNA, but you can do this test on any VNA. The reason I use this one is because it has a larger screen and I've got bad eyes and this really helps me out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back and I'm going to show how everything is going to be configured. And then we're going to connect this up to nano VNA saver on my computer. And we're going to take a look at the trace or the sweep that we run and see what the measured attenuation is. So stay tuned. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how we're set up for the test. So this is my VNA. It is the SV4401A um, by Sysjoint, but this will work with any nano VNA or any VO, VNA for that matter. And we have it set up for a log mag 2.1 uh, test, S21. And so what that means is, is that uh, we have a signal that is generating on port one, running through our circuit, and then going into port two, and what we're doing is we're measuring gain. Um, in this case, it's negative gain because that's what we're looking for in our common mode choke. So you can see I've got some adapters and I've got some cables that come out of here. And these cables come through, and I did a through calibration for this on these cables to cancel them out uh, when we do the actual test. And what I did is I just connected the positive leads up to the toroid to one of the sets of windings. And in this case, it's the red. Now I could connect these red ones to the black leads on the toroid and we would get the same results. And then I just had the shield uh, shorted out right here. And then what I get is a reading. So just wanted to show this so everybody can understand how we're set up and configured. This will work with any choke type configuration. And what we want to do now is go to the Nano VNA Saver software so you can see a little bit better what we're looking at. So I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. And I had some trouble getting Nano VNA Saver to connect to the VNA. Now, I don't know if it's because Windows installed updates or if it's because I have a different cable here that I'm using, my USB-C cable. So what I did is a screen capture of the VNA and have it displayed here. And a couple of different things that you can see is that you can see that we have the log mag uh, S21 trace uh, activated. That's the blue trace, the only trace on the screen. And we're running a sweep from one megahertz to 60 megahertz. 
And you can see that uh, pretty much all the way across the uh, the band or all the way across the spectrum there, um, we're below negative 30 dB. So that's negative 30 dB of attenuation that would be applied from this um, this choke that we're using, and that would be sufficient. Uh, I think that people say 20 is good, 25 is better, below 30 is best. And so this would be an adequate choke for common mode current across all of that. And this is how you measure that. So hopefully that answered the question, helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody. Totally appreciate it.